now 6.30 and it's time to call the regular meeting of the West Valley City Council to order. By way of roll call, we have excused Council Member uh, Karen Lay and uh, Mayor Mike Winder uh, tonight and we'll look forward to them uh, rejoining us next week. Uh, also to help us uh, get through the many items of our agenda meeting tonight, we have uh, City Manager Mr. Wayne Pyle and our City Recorder Ms. Sherry McKendrick I'm on the dais with us tonight. Uh, each week, as city council members take turns uh, with an opening ceremony to uh, set the tone and mood of the meeting. And this week, by chance, it uh, falls to me. And so what I would like to do is uh, relate to you a, a, a short story and uh, then have, invite you to join me in a Pledge of Allegiance. But the story was uh, that I wanted to share with you tonight became, uh, I think, very timely because before this meeting, we had uh, several members of our community gather in the lobby to be uh, recognized for a clean and beautiful award. And also, as I drove to City Hall today, I noticed the several members of uh, the uh, our crossing guard unit that's out now that many schools are back in session. And, and uh, just, I've been reminded uh, of many uh, small tasks that seemingly going on in our city and how much they mean to us. And so I wanted to just relay this story to you real quick before the pledge. And it's about a man whose name is uh, Charles Plum. And he was a US Navy pilot back in Vietnam. And he flew uh, 75 combat missions. And on a 76, his plane was destroyed uh, by a surface to air, air missile. Uh, Mr. Plum, uh, Plum uh, ejected and he uh, parachuted into enemy hands and was captured uh, in a vehicle and imprisoned in a Viet Cong prison for uh, six years. And so I learned many lessons. And with that, uh, I guess this, this poignant one here was, after he was released six years, he was having dinner in uh, a restaurant and a man came up to him and he says, your name is Plum, right? You flew jet fighters in Vietnam from the aircraft carrier Kitty Hawk and you were shot down. How in the world did you know that? Asked Plum. I packed your parachute, the man replied. Plum gasped in surprise and gratitude. The man pumped his hand and said, well, I guess it worked. And Plum assured him, it sure did. If your shoot hadn't worked, I wouldn't be here today. So Plum, he spent uh, that night and other nights thinking just about how, oh, you know, that man would have looked in his old Navy uniform, how he was a pilot and this man was a, was a, was a sailor and they usually didn't uh, consort much with each other. But he thought for many hours how the Sailor had sat in the, the depths of a ship on a long wooden table, perhaps, uh, in the bows of this ship, carefully weaving together strings and silk from each chute. Um, each time he did so, he was holding uh, the hands of, of a fighter pilot in, that he didn't know in, in his hands. And so with that plum, he, he asked the question, he says, who is packing your parachute? Everyone has someone who provides what they need to make it through each day. And he also points out that there's many different kinds of parachutes that we need. That uh, when he was shot down over enemy territory, he needed not only his physical parachute, but a mental parachute, an emotional parachute, and a spiritual parachute. So sometimes, I guess the thought I wanted to leave you is that sometimes that life gives us daily challenges and we might miss what's important. We may fail to say hello, please, or thank you, or maybe congr congratulate someone on a clean and beautiful award or their, their work as a crossing guard or give them a compliment or just for, say something nice for no reason. But this week uh, and as we recite this pledge that uh, I hope that you'll remember and recognize those people that uh, pack your parachutes. So please join me now. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for letting me relay that to you and for you joining me. Item four on our agenda is a time we have for special recognitions. And if you're wondering, this, uh, about a month or so ago, we had a cabinet member from uh, China come in. It was probably the highest ranking Chinese official ever in uh, West Valley City or maybe even Utah for the matter and so we gave him some time uh, oftentimes we'll give scouts the opportunity as well on spell special recognitions last week they were stealthy and I couldn't point them out but this week I I think we are free from that and so we will move on to item five 
Passed our special recognitions to our approval of minutes of the August 14th meeting. So, council members. Move for approval of August 14th, 2012 regular meeting minutes. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve minutes of August 14th. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Here's the minutes are approved unanimously. Item six is our comment period, which we uh, have every week and limit to uh, 30 minutes and five minutes a speaker. Uh, we have a sign-up sheet and uh, of, of one tonight, so we'll ask uh, Mr. Tapiosa. I say that right or even close? Yes, close. Okay, That's if you want right. to come up to the microphone here, and we'll give you uh, five minutes to address the council. Uh, thank you. Uh, my, my name is Sally Tapasoa, and I'm, uh, I guess that story you told, I'm a Vietnam veteran. Uh, we escorted the USS Kitty Hawk. Um, I guess I'm here to uh, solicit your help and also to probably just to inform you. Uh, on August the 12th, there was a flooding from the canal that is going 40th west, uh, between 41 south and 35 south. And uh, I guess, Mr. Bueller, I guess you are my uh, <coughs> district. Uh, but anyway, my house was flooded in the basement. This was August the 12th. Uh, and I've been trying to uh, I've been here to see the, uh, the city engineers and also the canal people. Uh, and at the meantime, my, uh, I guess my house is getting kind of... <clears throat> we had asked people to uh, bring their blowers in, and so they did bring those blowers in and it helped. Uh, so that's why I'm here. I really don't know who's... I've had some conversation with the canal people, uh, some good people, and also with the city engineers, but the uh, answers are not uh, satisfactory. <coughs> so that's why I'm here. I don't know if, but I just felt that maybe perhaps I would just come and, and report this. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, th thank you. And, and uh, this, uh, this forum is not necessarily to have a dialogue back and forth, but uh, I know everyone here is. I've heard that. We appreciate you bringing us up to up to speed on that tonight. Okay. Thank you. Did anyone did anyone else in the audience come to utilize a comment period tonight? Okay. Then we will move past that, and we have uh, several items of business tonight, including uh, a public hearing. And each item that uh, the council will discuss, whether these items uh, in the public hearing and the ordinance changes or the resolutions, uh, we have discussed previously in our uh, study meeting, which is. 4.30 in the uh, adjacent building, but uh, now tonight is the night to take formal action on them. And we'll ask our city manager, Mr. Wayne Pyle, to please introduce uh, the, the public hearing regarding uh, application ZT1-2012. Okay, thank you, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. And we have two public hearings tonight, and of course we'll have to open and close those separately, but I figured uh, that I would take a second here and outline what the three actions are that are going to be associated with those two public hearings as they concern the same matter. Jake was going to show the map for me of the, the geographic area that we're talking about, but I can describe as well. It looks like he was grabbing the gentleman on the way out. Okay, so you'll remember as council, we've discussed this over the last couple of weeks. Back in the year 2000, we adopted an ordinance that was called the, or allowed for uh, what we call a transfer of development rights or created what we call a TDR overlay zone. And the purpose for that was to encourage and facilitate development in places um, that would be able to transfer certain development rights to another area of town where we had designated we wanted to preserve wetlands and be able to in the future build parks and this was to the idea and design of this was to be able to allow accomplishment of both those goals and we did do that to some degree um, before the development market changed significantly uh, worsened as some would probably say uh, we were able to accomplish those goals and a lot of that was based on 
property values of a, a raw land uh, aspect. Anyway, the area that that what includes is, uh, I have the address here so I can be real specific about it. It's uh, roughly 6800 West, or between 6800 West and 60th, uh, 24, 68th West and 60th West, and then 24th South and Parkway Boulevard. So the first public hearing is to request uh, or accept public input requesting a zone tax change, uh, which would in effect repeal Chapter 7, 726, and that's what authorized the uh, transfer of development rights um, overlay zone and therefore that, that uh, concept and program. The second uh, public hearing, and I'll just introduce that as well right sure. now, the SERP, that's okay. In the second public hearing, uh, what we'll be asking you to do is actually reduce that open space area that we designated as uh, having the TDRs or being able to transfer TDRs to. And this is a basic map of the outline or the address that I outlined earlier. So we would be reducing or proposing to reduce that area from 160 acres, which it was originally designated as, down to 46 acres, and also remove the TDRS overlay zone from the zoning map. So those are the two actions that would be associated with the second public hearing. And with that, sir, we're ready for uh, any comment. Okay, so thank you for that introduction. And, and uh, so we'll have three items of action tonight, but uh, they're all related, but uh, so somewhat separate uh, actions for this council to consider. So I will I hereby open the public hearing regard, regarding application ZT1-2012 filed by West Valley City requesting uh, the zone text change of the transfer development rights overlay zone. Has anybody come to speak uh, regarding this application? Okay, sir, if you come up to the microphone and if you please state your name and address so we'll be compliant <coughs> with uh, the law in our, our meeting minutes. My name is Dana Scott Day. My address is 6692 West Hunter Crest Circle, directly across Parkway Boulevard from the proposed change. Okay. Um, I got a letter a while back and I came down to the uh, hall here and asked what exactly the plan was. And he said that they want to industrialize it, turn Parkway into a five lane road and uh, that the wetland would be preserved. And I wasn't real hip on the idea, but didn't say much and couldn't make that meeting anyways. But now it looks like they want to encompass the wetland as well, which in my estimation, if they industrialize, is going to lower my property value, uh, is going to destroy my sovereignty in my backyard with a truck drought going through my backyard and even if I could sell to move out I would never get market value for it even close because the desire to live there is gone with a five lane road going through there and I would just like to pose my objection to the whole wetland idea uh, you know it, if you want to send the truck some other way I might be able to get behind it but it's hard enough to sleep and get any peace and quiet in your own backyard with the motorcycles and the small traffic that we have now. You start adding big rigs and box trucks and squealing air brakes, there's no sovereignty anymore. It's not worth living there. So I highly object the whole wetland idea. Anybody have any questions? Or Mr. Mr. My question is you object to reducing the wetland I do. I, I object. Or you object to the wetlands? I, I object to it. I want it to stay the wetlands. Oh, okay. So you're not objecting the wetlands. You're I, want it, I want it to stay that. Okay. That's how it is. It was the whole reason I moved to West Valley. And with that, Mr. City Manager, is this area here under the proposals tonight continues to stay wetlands? Yeah, that's correct. Under, Jake, under the plans, right? Pardon me. Uh, Jake, we put up the second map. So the second map shows if I remember correctly, the 46 acres that it, that it uh, remains at. Is that the same map? Yes, current. This is the 160. That's the current plan alignment. Okay, I get. I didn't get a copy of the map. I guess I don't understand how your map's laid out. 
I see a highlighted area. Is that what is going to be industrialized, or is that what's being protected? No, if, if you can see this map. Well, first, let me let me answer that uh, question too, sir. We're not changing any zoning or proposing to change any zoning or actually proposing any development. So I'm not sure where the industrialization well, I, idea came from. I came from. to this office and said, well, what is this about? And uh -huh. I said, well, the future plan is, is to industrialize this area. Ah, okay, all right. Probably what they told you is the general plan, which is the long-term plan of the city, it's, it's been in effect for a number of years and modified a couple of different times, probably has some of that area zoned industrial, but we don't have any development uh, plans or projects that are going in there at this time or that we know of. There are some uh, development plans going kind of more further north up there to 201, so I don't know, maybe that was also referred to as well. But this 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 uh, proposal here isn't uh, um, proposing that we start or do or create any kind of industrial, actual industrial development. Okay. Now, uh, also to the second part to sort of clarify the uh, the map question. I think what I'll do is have Steve come up here for seconds. Maybe he can kind of point out the whole thing. I think that you're correct, Corey, or, or sorry, that uh, the 46 acres is that portion over there to the west. But I'm going to let uh, Steve kind of delineate that for us so we know for sure. That area that the arrow is on right now is going to be the... the yeah, Steve, can you speak to that? Where's the 46 acres that's, that would be left? Yes, sir. So on the, the map that's on the screen now, the area that's uh, outlined in a green dashed line, the, those are the 46 acres that are actually currently owned by the city and would remain as wetland open space area. So that area would remain open. Okay. Now, the uh, overall shaded uh, green area, that's where the 160 acres was, correct? Right, in the previous map. All right. Now, the fact that we are taking off this TDR overlay doesn't mean that that's going to develop, doesn't mean that the zoning has changed. It, it's exactly the same zoning as it was before. Right. You still have... South of the uh, canal, you still have agricultural zoning, yeah. so that doesn't change. It's just the uh, that open space designation uh, area gets reduced. Steve, could you also kind of go, I know we don't have the zoning map up here right now, but just from your memory, can you kind of go over where largely the different zoning designations in the area are? Actually, we do have a zoning map. It's if that's okay, sir. No, no, oh, yeah, please. So on, this is a zoning map. You can see, um, so the area that's shaded in gray, that was the uh, TDR uh, um, overlay zone. Uh, so the area where you could transfer density out of. Uh, so you can see south of the canal, which is the about halfway through the map that runs east and west. On the south end, you have A1 zoning or agricultural zoning that requires uh, one acre lots. And then on the north, uh, you have um, kind of to the west, you have manufacturing. And on the east side, the portion that shaded was zoned agricultural, which is a half acre lots. So all of that underlying zoning does not change. Okay, and that is all, all agriculturally zoned right now. But like I was mentioning as well, where you see where the M parcels are, those are manufacturing uh, zoned parcels. They have been before, they haven't changed either. That may be where somebody was giving you that. Well, idea. no, because I was specifically asking about that because I couldn't make that meeting because I, uh -huh. I have to work that day and you can't get out of work where I work. Anyways, I tried to make it but I couldn't and I was totally opposed to that being rezoned as well because mm -hmm. his, he was quick to point out that this is going to be industrialized, they're going to build a road out here, make a light at 64th mm -hmm. and you know it's basically going to be a truck route. Yeah, there is going to be development out there here in the near future. The the 160 acres that we're dealing with tonight basically corresponds with the shaded area that's agricultural, it'll stay agricultural. Uh, and the other ones, even though they are, and, and you're right, I mean, that, that area to the north and, and to the west over there by 201, even though that probably will develop here in the in the near future. We haven't changed, that's always been that way. That's been zoned those designations. And I, and I have no problem with, with okay. that at all. Okay. As long as <laughs> um, we can send the truck some other way. I mean, my my rooms, on, my bedroom's only a hundred feet off the road. Mm -hmm. You know, you get trucks with the air brakes rolling through there day and night, and I work right. I work shift work, so it doesn't matter if it's day or night; it's still going right. to affect me every day. Okay. 
and uh, I mean, there and there are roads being built in that area as well. And I can't remember if Sixty Fourth is uh, one of the routes, but also as well that yeah, would, that well, doesn't have anything a, to do with this. the parkway like the rest of the parkway. Right, that would okay. be awesome. That would reduce noise. That would slow people down without stopping them and hearing acceleration and braking. And okay, and that was some of the, one of my points that I wanted to make tonight too was that you know a bike lane might not be the best answer for okay. everybody's peace. Anyway, sir. No, th no, thanks for the for the input on that. I mean, this, these are the three items are a little interrelated, and then there's kind of the whole big general plan question here. But I guess regarding this application, this I guess we need to kind of get back on focus of just the uh, repealing Chapter 726 of the West Valley Code regarding this this transfer of development rights ordinance. So. Um, did you have a comment? I, I, just, I just had a comment about roads, and, and again, this is a little bit on the side of the issue, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Wayne, but the Mountain View Corridor Highway has a really interesting interchange, and most of that traffic will be going on 2400 south. Is that it's, correct? It's not Parkway. So it's and it's south north. of uh, and it's south of 201. It's somewhere right in that area. I can't remember exactly what the south is, but it is in that area. It follows the, the corridor, east, and there will be a new interchange in there. Yeah, roughly. In but the east-west uh, route to that is is just to the north of the wind co, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, but also keep in mind when when we're talking about an east-west access to it, it's not like there's going to be new east-west especially at any kind of distance. Of course, there will be right there associated with the interchange, but the existing road network is what will feed that from east to the west. Like where the road dead ends up on the west side, where that's going to be. Well, it connects to the Mount View, yeah. It's kind of a funny interchange. In yeah, it, it, it's not a usual configuration. That's right. Okay. So anyway, it's a Good discussion on that. The public hearing is still open. Has somebody else, anybody else come to speak regarding this application? Same thing, we need name and address for My name is Brent Rushton. I live at 5491 West, 4100 South, West Valley City, Utah. And uh, I'm, we, uh, I represent the, uh, that owns probably the largest portion of the property that's this ordinance applies to. And, uh, we support, we support A and, do you want me to say B too so I don't have to come up again, or we support both A and B, the three actions that you're taking, we'd like to see you pass it. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. Is there anybody else that's come to speak regarding Mr. Markham? Just as a, Mike Markham, just you, please. 3008 Alice Circle. And this doesn't necessarily reflect to this action, but I just have a question for you, which I, I don't understand. On the, green, on the green map back here, we see where we've got the big jog in to the right towards the canal or whatever that is. See what I mean? Yes. How come we don't do things more square? Why doesn't the line go straight? I see a lot of the, you know, in Sandy, there's little pockets of Salt Lake County property, and. And I can understand ours city, West Valley City, zigzaggy line down the Jordan River. <coughs> How come we don't square things up? How come when you when we over take over a piece of property, it's not square? I, other than you don't want that piece of property because it's not desirable. But we have little segments. I know Public Works has to deal with a lot of things that, you know, a, a little segment of property goes off this way, so they have to snake in through to take care of this or to take care of that. Why don't we do things square? A uh, pretty simple okay. answer to that, if I can, sir, uh, which is, um, if I understood the question correctly, basically the way these end up getting set up, you have that overall overlay zone that was originally put in place, but the 46 acres that, as Mr. Pastrick pointed out, comprise what West Valley City now owns, and why that's not square is because we really acquired that over the years sort of parcel by parcel. So the, the configuration from an outside sort of line standpoint really was determined by what the lot lines were and how we acquired the property. So, Jake, were you the green one again? One the last there. one, Jake. But I guess you don't, know, how come it didn't come like this? Probably because the owners didn't want us to buy the land. Well, when, you, when you're altering this. Yes, yeah, that's right. You, you can also kind of see the lot lines in there, Mr. Markham, so. 
you'll see there's a bunch of small ones with the dark lines and then to the west there's a big uh, uh, more open lot we just weren't able to acquire those pieces but when you're changing the overlay overlay because if it's here you're moving it to here can we move that to there we probably could yeah i think we determined it that way just because that's what we owned Thank you. Has anybody else come to speak on this application? Okay, seeing none, I will close this public hearing and put the action and discussion uh, before the council. Questions? Motions? Move for approval of uh, Ordinance uh, 1236. 35. Uh, oh, 35. Okay. 36 second. Is the next one. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve Ordinance 1235. Which, uh, is there any discussion to that motion? So I'll make a comment here on this. As, uh, many of you know I, I rep serve and represent the city on a, a national board and the transfer of development rights is a is a tool that many cities use uh, across the nation to uh, help them with uh, their general plan of, of uh, development, some of their open space with the city. And since we've had this ordinance for I think 12 years, I think it's been uh, to some degree or another very very successful. But with um, the successes we've had of being able to preserve these 46 acres is a good success, and then the successes of being able to develop that 5600 West Corridor um, in the midst of a recession has been uh, pretty remarkable and, and I think leads to make uh, things like this uh, as, as stated in the in the issue of things uh, in our issue papers to be um, ac accomplished and so it's been a uh, it's been a good it's been a good thing but uh, time to move on I guess be my, my comment on this and if there's no others to that I guess we can call the question and ask all those in favor of Ordinance 1235 to please say aye. 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 Opposed. Okay, so moving past that now, we'll segue into uh, the other public hearing regarding uh, amending the general plan and amending uh, the zoning map, which we've heard a little bit of comment on, but has anybody come to speak any further to those two items tonight? Okay, seeing none, we'll close that public hearing. And Council, we have Ordinance 1236 to consider. Motion to approve uh, Ordinance 12-36. Second. Okay, is there any discussion to approving Ordinance 1236? Seeing none, we'll ask all those in favor to please say aye. 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 Appears also to be unanimous. Uh, we also have action on Ordinance on 1237, which is the amending the, the zoning map. I would move for approval of Ordinance 12-37. Second. Okay, is there any discussion to the motion of approving Ordinance 1237? Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Also is approved. Okay, we now move to our, with that being taken care of, we now move to our three resolutions tonight and ask uh, Mr. Piles, please introduce Resolution 12-127 for us, please. Thank you, sir. This resolution would authorize us to enter into an agreement with Keddington and Christensen, the CPAs that do our audit and have performed our audit for several years in the past to do the audit for the fiscal year that just ended, June 30th of this year. Okay. Any questions regarding this? One question I wanted to ask was uh, one of the main focuses that I know this audit team looks at every year is, is uh, our federal grants. And now, is that something that they're going to be doing this year, or? They definitely will be uh, looking at it again this year because that's one of the major components, at least from a, a complexity standpoint, they always do. Okay. But then they also uh, do varying levels of, of look from year to year. And I honestly can't remember if this year they were planning on doing a, a heavier look than they normally do or not. Jim, can you? Well, I guess it also Fresh depends on there. the level of federal grants we receive, or? Well, we basically receive the same uh, federal grants usually from year to year, unless you've got uh, uh, 
things going on like the energy block grants that we received a couple of years ago for stimulus money, that kind of thing. Yes, sir. The um, federal grants are required by law to be examined closely every year. They term that a single audit, and that's one of the things that we're required to have the auditors look into very closely each year. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Okay, if there's no other questions, I think a motion would be in order on. This is for approval of resolution 12 127. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second before this body to approve resolution 12 127. Is there any discussion to that motion? Okay, seeing no, call the question and ask those in favor to please say aye. 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 Appears to be unanimous, and we'll look forward to the report of Kettington and Christensen regarding this year's audit. Uh, Mr. Pyle, please introduce 12128, please. Thank you, sir. This proposed agreement would allow West Valley City and Melinda Checkets Hibbert uh, to contract for the provision of administrative law judge services that Ms. Hibbert would perform. Okay. Council, do you have any need for uh, clarification or any questions regarding this resolution? No. Motion would be in order. Move for approval of. Uh, of resolution uh, 12-128. Second. Okay, we have a motion, a second to uh, approve this resolution, which uh, is an agreement for administrative law judge services. Is there uh, any discussion to that motion? Uh, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 That's also appears unanimous. Final resolution 12-129, please. Thank you, sir. As we have been working on the Fairborn Station project, we're realigning roads, we're putting in new infrastructure in terms of curb gutter and sidewalk, side strip, that kind of thing. Uh, we need to accept a dedication of pieces along Market Street and Lehman Avenue from UTA. So that's the purpose of this resolution. Okay. Any questions on this resolution okay. or motion? Move for approval of resolution 12 dash. Gonna get back here. 128. 129. Excuse me. Second. We do have a motion and second to approve resolution 12 129. It's right outside the windows here. So, uh, any discussion to that? Okay, seeing none, we'll ask all those in favor to please indicate by saying aye. 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 And that also is approved. We'll look forward to seeing uh, more improvements to that section of our city. And uh, is there any need for executive session tonight? No, sir. Okay, seeing see none, this body will, and no other business, this body will stand adjourned. Thank you.